So, welcome everyone to episode 9 of the Symphony Gear podcast, the episode where we will fanboy about Symphony Gear and Tsubasa and explosions and the commander doing awesome things. Tonight, I am joined by the wonderfully amazing special Sea Tactics, the man who once jumped out of an airplane without a parachute but did not die because the ground was too scared of him. That I, also didn't happen. I also None did. of these things. Oh, don't worry. For the final episode, I'm going to say something that actually did happen. Wait. To find the final episode of the podcast? Yes. But what if we come back and do more? We don't come up with other crazy things. I'm scared. Oh, as you should be. So, <laughs> this episode, we got flashbacks with Miku. Hibiki's sunshine taken from her. Her Hibiki being arrested, and then Tsubasa betraying everyone, along with other things, but I did not write down an episode summary, so take it away, C. Uh, Senfo Gear XV, episode 9. I am a father. Fudo kills Tsubasa's father, and in turn, breaks her seal invasion to free her. Those things did happen. This episode was freaking crazy! Yeah, like, we talked about how the last episode, how it was crazy from beginning to end, and I think this episode was even more so, but in a better way. It it was... The moment I realized I loved Symphogear Gear with all of my heart and want everybody to watch it and feel the same way was when was when Noble Red were like, let's free let's 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 free uh Shimha. And Shimha gets out and immediately cuts two of them in half and with then, a laser beam. And then cuts Vanessa in half like two seconds later. It chops her head off, cuts her head off, I think. Well, I don't think he ever or at least when I was looking through it again, they, we didn't see it, but we saw like the camera angle from Vanessa as like her body was cut in half. Like we saw it, her yeah. head and upper half of her body sliding. It was just great. Yeah, that was. that moment was, I was just like, thank you, Rising, for randomly saying one time we should watch some folk here because <laughs> there are not, without... There are not shows like some folk here. This was just a fantastic scene where I was like, oh! Oh, this... Oh, okay! Yeah! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, this was... It was absolutely... This whole episode was just insane from beginning to end. It's everything I ever wanted! You know what else it had that you wanted? Boops? The moon. Oh, yes! Yeah, because Shemha even made a comment that she wanted to do things to the moon. Lewd things I've heard. Uh, you know, with Simple Gear, sure, let's go for it. <laughs> I mean, I think she she made a comment like, and that incessant moon is still there, and I'm like, <sighs> things are happening. That video, that video where I said it's going to be about the moon in the final scene. Well, you, after credit scene, the moon with the laser and the thing, and we, we, yeah, <laughs> it was great. Exactly. <laughs> Oh my god. I, I love it. Did I say I like this episode? I, I don't think I got it across. I love this episode. Yeah, and we got like so much emotional power too with Subasu and like fighting her father there. And like you can feel the rage and the hate and like everything up to this point leading to that. I, uh, we've brought it up multiple times before, but every character pretty much represents a different genre of shonen or just a different genre of anime entirely. Fudo and the director is like like old Edo period samurai yes. crazy awesome like like do it for the for the honor of the family you got to you you've disgraced our family one of you's got to die yeah and we finally got the commander fighting too that's the thing i was super excited to see right and it wasn't like any huge fight scene which i don't even think I'm okay with that because there's just the emotional. This, this was Subasa's scene. This this wasn't the commander scene. Well, it's still the commander. Like he caught the sword. They were like flying through the air. He the uh, Fudo like pile drive uh, the commander like threw lots of brick and like drove his head into the ground. Yeah, yeah, like, which was f fantastic. Like yeah, that's all I wanted from the fight with the commanders. Like see him going all out. I kind of wish he won, but I know why he didn't. Story wise. I wish he would have hit the suplex. <laughs> maybe. Well, like, he's out of the ground now, so maybe he'll do that now. 
<laughs> suplex Fudo, just Fudo, you bastard, suplex. <laughs> exactly. Yes. I, I love it. And this, this episode title is I Am the Father. And it's just... Is that right? That, I just got the meaning of that. Like, you have Hibiki's father, but you also have Subasa's father, and you also have Subasa's grandfather and the commander's father. So, like, there's so many fathers in this episode. This is the Father's Day episode of the show. For sure. I wonder what Chris's mom looks like. Uh, we don't need to worry about that one. I, I think we need to see Chris's mom. Uh, I think we do. All right, well, I'll go look for you after this episode. Wait, she exists? I know people. <laughs> do, you, do you know Satellite? <laughs> the studio? Oh, I know Satellite. Are you 4chan? Well, you see, you remember like last Thursday when I ended up getting lost on the way to uh, the grocery store? Uh, no. No, not at all. Okay, good. I, I'd rather not have that story be on the YouTube. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but speaking of things that you don't want on the YouTube, uh, after they're recovering from the battle, like when uh, Miku transformed in after that, then they had only Mario go to uh, go after Fudo, which I thought was interesting. Yes, it is. Mar Mario's role in this season has been, it's obvious since season two, I believe. They've kind of treated, or was it season three? Season two, right? Because... She was with the lollies and, and yeah. the mamu. Uh, so, so yeah, season two. Ever since then, she's... Ever since season two, she's kind of been a utility character. Yeah, she... And this seems to be the first season of, like, really giving her much focus, at least on her own. But now that we know about her song and how it keeps coming back up, there's... And how they, they send yeah. Maria. There's something interesting going on with her. And there's also Maria's relationship with Tsubasa. And Tsubasa is being the one who's been like uh, brainwashed and betrayed them. Right. And I, I think this is definitely... If, if all of the other moments didn't solidify it, uh, Tsubasa and Maria are indeed married. I don't think they confirmed that. I mean, they did kind of try killing each other. Or they were fighting each other. I, I loved it because when Tsubasa shows up, Mario's like, oh, and you show up. Like, it was just the tone and the delivery, and then it was great. It was awesome. I was like, yeah, I really like fight. The, I like the conversation between Mario and Tsubasa in that part, too. Like, how Tsubasa is not, like, completely brainwashed. It's like the, the brainwashing, like, pushed her in this direction. To, like, think, in order to protect this country, we need strength at any cost. Mm -hmm. and yes, a, and then it's a contrast to the songs, which is the songs are more like about unifying people, and you get your strength from that. Uh huh. Right. Um, the whole delivery from Yoko Hikasa, uh, who is the voice actress for Maria in this scene, is was was fantastic. It was it was the right tone. It was filled with 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 confusion and anger right. and. It didn't come across as just an anime scene like this where they're just talking stoically at each other. It was, it felt like the, these two voice actors were, were acting out a scene, like actors. And it was fantastic. The way, the way that she delivered it was exactly perfect the way it needed to be delivered. And it brought a lot of gravitas to it. And it was, it was fantastic. It, it wasn't a sugar coated thing delivery it was raw it was it felt powerful and yoko hikasa god bless her she's not not like the best person uh in in the japanese voice acting pool she's very popular though she voiced mio and kaon oh huh okay but, let me tell my friend that's who watched info gear but she's 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 solid she's really solid and she doesn't get a lot of chances to really shine i think that's just because she's been given a lot of really weird roles like Mio from K-On! But she's gr she's she's great in this. I think I've liked her the most in this. Okay. Than any other of her roles. Yeah, I, and we've talked about this before, like how hard the show would be to dub, and a major reason for that is the music, but I think it's just also because of how good the voice actors are just as actresses. Yeah, I mean, uh, Aoyuki. That's CBT? Like, how, 
as Hibiki. You can't. Like, who would even be close to that? Yeah, like, the musical talent plus just the voice acting. Like, I don't really like English dubs, but it would be hard for me to like an English dub for this show compared to the Japanese. What they would have to do is they have, would have to comprehensively, not like rewrite the story of the script or anything, but just they would have to do really stringent casting. Like, <laughs> It would take a a lot of work and time and money, and I don't I don't think they want to do that unless they're guaranteed something in return. Which Simple Gear is a very niche show. Yeah, like, like I think about it, we have as, about as many views on this podcast as there's, there are people watching it on Mal. Yeah. So yeah. So that's that's why we do the podcast. More people will know that Simple Gear is amazing. Yeah, um, and, and it's. I mean, we said it a million times. It's great that this show is, is is getting a very. It's the second highest rated show on my anime list this season. What's the villain? Ta- villain Saga. I haven't seen it, so I won't make sarcastic comments. Well, it's, Villain Saga is from the same people who, who made Attack on Titan with Studio. So yeah, and plus I know the manga is really well respected. So yeah, it's one of those long running uh, mangas like Blade of the Immortal, which is getting adapted next season. I'm excited for that. Yeah, uh, I dropped that one already. What? Yeah, I dropped the, uh, that after episode zero. <laughs> Why? Because I, because I like to make you cry. <laughs> Why do you torture me? <laughs> I sometimes tell you to watch good anime like some folk gear. You need to do that all the time. Watch fake lead. Ah! <laughs> I was waiting for that segue. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, we have Maria and the commander of them going after uh, Fudo and like him having the noise and then the epic samurai-style battle, which, yeah, that was cool. Oh, that was, that was the best part of this episode. Yes, that, that was great. But then we have uh, Maria be able to like, break Tsubasa's control by slapping her, and that was just like, this slap of friendship is what you always need. Yes, then they made out. Uh, not quite. Oh god damn it! They need to god damn it. One of these one of these girls needs to kiss the other because I, it, that's it would be perfect then because it's already confirmed we're going to the moon, baby. So we don't we don't need we don't we know that's going to happen. Uh, and the last thing that I said was like one of these girls needs to kiss. That's 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 on my bucket list. And if it ain't Miku and Hibiki. Sabasa and Mario will do. Yeah, that would probably be the second best uh, solution. And yes, yeah, so indeed. After, so speaking of the solution, uh, after uh, the Fudo is trying to activate the seal on Subasa again, but it did not work, so she tried killing her. But then Subasa's father is the one who stops the bullet. Yes, and that gets back <laughs> into the idea of like fatherhood too. It's like what family means? It means like being there for your children, and it's showing like how Fudo is going completely against that for his own desires. Right, right. Uh, just the whole scene as well, where where Subasa's father dies. Yeah, and he's been in. The, he's he's sprinkled out here and there throughout the whole series, but this is a great wrap up for his character. I think it was fantastic. Yeah, like shows him accomplishing what he really wanted, and that was to protect Subasa. Exactly. And it worked. And then that set uh, Subasa into a rage trying to kill Fudo. Yeah, which was amazing. She had like a massive fire blade of hatred. And I'm like, oh my god, I love it. Do more of this. Well, it also shows like she's kind of not grown though, because back in like episode four, wherever it was when she lost control, she was also unleashing that sort of fire against the noise and against um, the, the demon one. Right. I, I think um, is an example of Subasa's maybe youth and inexperience, but I also think uh, it goes beyond what happened with the, the SEAL invasion and what happened at the concert. I, I think this is just a, a moment that I, her father got killed right in front of her eyes. Yeah. She lost control. I, I think... I can't blame her for what she did, too, but it also shows like the SEAL invasion is not like complete control. It's just like a nudge. Yeah, she 
a, a nudge in the right, it's really easy to press her buttons. Exactly. I guess. And she even like makes the comment saying she doesn't know what she's protecting, but it's like she has this one target. And then her song too, there's a lot of meaning in that song. So like she's not she's not fighting for family anymore. She's like and then the power of like music to unite and not to be violent, despite the fact that this is an action show, but still. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh this episode is amazing. Mm-hmm. Oh, but it wasn't <laughs> done yet either. Then the uh, the Simple Year uh, song got approval to like unleash their ability that they were forbidden to for a while, and so we got like Subasa's uh, new forum. The amalgam. Yeah, that, whatever that was. And, like Subasa looked like a character under review Starlight when she got that form, which I thought was interesting. Oh yes, that was a great part. And Review Starlight's great. If you haven't seen it, it's basically kind of like this show, but not doesn't go in the crazy realm. It's more of artsy realm. Yeah, but. it's like artsy insanity with music, as opposed to action insanity with music. Yeah, as opposed to Chris and Maria's boobs touching. It's more of it's more about feelings. It's more about feelings and performance and art and the slice of life kind of sort of and the banana. Well I guess you could say there's a lot of feeling and art in Chris and Suba- uh, Maria's boobs touching. There's definitely art somewhere in this. <laughs> I saw a picture of Chris that was really unflattering. It was a really bad angle. <laughs> I'll just say that. Uh, and that was not art. <laughs> There was art. Okay, so we have Subasa's transformation, and then she's able to match uh, Fudo's power. And speaking of, Fudo is able to go toe to toe with the Symphogear user, despite not being a Symphogear person. Yeah, he's pretty powerful. Yeah, like, like, he's. I like how he just like grabbed his sword instead of his gun to fight. Just first of all, that's yeah. how anime works, but also it shows his power. That reminds me of the end of uh, Cowboy Bebop. Do you remember? Uh, not really. Spoilers, skip like 30 or 40 seconds. Uh, at the end of Cowboy Bebop, uh, uh, Spike is fighting Vicious, and Spike has a gun, Vicious has a sword. Oh, and, yeah. And they're both of the, their weapons get swapped. Uh, and so instead of picking up the other's weapons and using it, uh, they decide to end it there now, and then they throw their weapons back at each other and have like a draw. Hmm. It, was, it reminds kind of, remind me kind of of that. It's really cool. Okay, yeah, I can see that. Okay, and can we be about spoilers? Uh, yes. So I guess you didn't really say the spoiler part of that. Anyway. Well, uh, I just, you know, really spoiled the whole ending. To, but. So, yes, then we have the battle of uh, Fudo continuing. And Fudo is like, just looks like he's going to lose, but he makes a comment saying that he will uh, die to unleash a monster for Japan. So I'm wondering, like, what exactly does that mean? It's got to be Shemha. Yeah, so, like, what is he doing with Shemha? Oh, and we also had Shemha possibly kill Vanessa and the other two. Oh, yeah, yeah. Then it, but yeah, so all they, of them. They wanted to use his, her power, or his power, or his power, and then, but they, like, die, maybe, probably? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think at least Vanessa's coming back. I would be surprised if they just killed off all three like that. I the the pink haired girl. She kind of seems like fodder to me, but at, at least at least I think Vanessa is going to come back, and it's going to be like that moment where the robot lolly comes back and grabs onto his leg, and, and she's like, "Do you love me?" And then they're like, "What's the phone doing there?" I hope the phone shows up again. The ever elusive phone. Yes. And then the less crazy part of this episode, but also important, was just Hibiki with her father. That, yeah, th- this is a great, great, great part. It's also kind of a callback to season three as well, just like how they had this strange relationship there. Yeah, this is this is wrapping up uh, Hibiki's whole family situation because uh, in that season it wasn't exactly in season three it wasn't exactly being resolved or anything. It was just that's how it is and she accepts it. Yeah, it's like accepting it's not perfect but now they're like moving beyond that. Right, and in this it shows that it's st- it still ain't easy. Um, it's not it's not the perfect situation uh, but the, the, the Hibiki's dad is like, hey you're alright, you're doing good. Yeah, and it's like they, it's like not perfect but they're still there for each other and like his uh, her father like wants to look after her as best he can even if he can't do much 
Right. It shows that it's it's still tough in some aspects, but Hibiki is is has already started, and especially Hibiki's father, I think, has uh, started on the path of of re- recovery from from this thing, even though it's kind of this whole season has been showing the opposite. I think it really shows this, this, this comment from Hibiki's father that Hibiki, Hibiki's taking this really well and very maturely. And, and she's, she's fine. Really? She's growing up and is able to like, accept that things aren't perfect and like fight to change it, but not like get all depressed or angry about it. Yeah, not not blame anyone else or or yeah. let it get her down. Yeah, it's like going, okay, I need to fix this. I care about Miku. I'm going to go do that. Right, right. And then they got like called out of house arrest that so she's going to go do cool things. <laughs> They're like, the, the phone call is probably something like this. Hey, Hibiki, shit just hit the fan really hardcore. Listen, about that house arrest thing, don't mention it. Uh, yeah. Just come here now, please, for the love of God. Come here, we need you to punch things. <laughs> exactly. Bring that drill hand thing, by the way. We're going to need that. Exactly. Also, I hope you've been watching Gurren Log on these past uh, house arrest. <laughs> Ever how long you've been under arrest? <laughs> you know what? You know what? We're going to put C4 on the end of your fists, and we think that's going to do a lot for you. So just... Be prepared for that. Uh, yes, the, the, whatever Hibiki does is going to be in, going to be fun to watch. I think he's going to have like a really great scene at the end. I feel like this whole season they've been cooling her off. Yeah, cause she hasn't really done all that much this season. It hasn't really been about her this season. It's been about the Sinfo Gears in general, I think, and Tsubasa. Yeah, because a lot of it about Tsubasa, a lot with Miku and their relationship, but not really about Hibiki. Right. She she kind of had her wrap-up in, like, season four. She kind of... She's, she's established herself as Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Hibiki. Exactly. And now she'll, like, get a brand new transformation because this is Sinfo Gear. Exactly. Super Saiyan, God Super Saiyan 3, Legendary Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan Ultra Instinct, Hibiki. And speaking of uh, Super Saiyan, we also have the after credits scene with the moon. I cannot wait. <laughs> They're gonna punch the moon! <laughs> well, like, what is there, like, the giant laser thing on the moon? Is What is it doing? And what is Shem Hog going to do it? Doesn't. To it? For, there's so many questions. First of all, how how did they not know that was there and see that and think, oh well, this is bad. Let's go not let's go destroy it before anything ever happens. Doesn't matter. Who cares? Yeah. They're gonna punch the moon. I should okay. Whenever they do that, that's gonna be my like tag for the uh, video title. Say they punch the moon. <laughs> I I am going to screenshot the exact moment. When her fists punches the moon, and it's going to be my wallpaper <laughs> for years. I could probably use some of these, uh, uh, just like the screenshots I got for this video as wallpaper. Like there's that uh, the one with the uh, Miku and Hibiki, like looking out over the with the shooting stars. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that's also the the cover for season five is yeah, them looking is. up to the sky with the rubble. Around them, and, and uh, uh, their, their rubble might be the moon falling apart. <sighs> Please punch the moon. Please. Uh, yeah, I'm out of notes to talk about. Anything else for this episode, or just the three in general that we want to cover? If Vinland Saga was not airing this season, this is the best show of the season. Yeah, Sinfo Gear is the anime of the year contender for me. But I agree. But I also have a habit of not letting uh, continue or letting shows that aren't finished be anime of the year, so that disqualifies like half of them. Wait, so you mean Shield Hero isn't your top anime of all time? Uh, for multiple reasons. It got confirmed season two is season three. Rising, you love Shield Hero. You love Junk Rabbit Girls, Raccoon Girls. Yeah. I definitely need to make a video of all the popular anime that I dropped this year. 
<laughs> you just make a video. Just, 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 just call it every reason to hate me. <laughs> it's just like the video starts. And you're just like, <clears throat> no, it'll be like, I didn't like Dragon Maid. I didn't like Science Gate. I didn't like Shield Hero. I, like I didn't Gate. like. Well, I mean, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, like Okabe is my favorite anime character. Okabe is great. That or All Might. It's hard to pick between the two. I pick Hibiki. Hibiki's also a good choice. She punches things. Exactly. Hibiki's like a All Might, but less muscular. Yes. And more punches. I mean, did you see what All Might did to Nomo? I did not. There are lots of punches. Did he go? Oh, no, oh, no, 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 but Nomu ended up pulling a Team Rocket at the end of it. Oh my god, Team Ross, Team Rocket is blasting off again? Yes, and then Nomu flew through two clouds. Well, clouds are the most dangerous things to hit. Exactly, like, have you tried eating a cloud before? I have. Exactly, just like we tried to drink all the Atlantic Ocean. That never happened. But you did try eating a cloud. Okay, that's going to be my intro for you for next time. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> All right, so thank you, everyone, for watching the Simply Gear podcast. As always, we enjoy talking about it and uh, just it, relishing in the awesomeness and absurdity of this show. Uh, this we'll, was amazing. Yes, we'll, we will be back uh, this Sunday at around 8 Eastern to talk about episode 10 and whatever uh, moon punching or destroying or Hibiki being awesome stuff that that episode will contain. Exactly. And now I need to go get caught up on other things so I can hate having to wait more. So, just... Alright, I was going to say goodbye, so say oh. goodbye, see? This just beautiful. Have just most majestic. Just yes. beautiful. We should all be more like Simple Gear. I agree. Goodbye. Bye-bye.